Mariah Carey was born March 27, 1970. She is an American singer-songwriter, record producer, actress, entrepreneur, and philanthropist. Renowned for her five-octave vocal range, melismatic singing style, and signature use of the whistle register, Carrie is referred to as the Songbird Supreme by Guinness World Records. She rose to fame in 1990 after signing to Columbia Records and releasing her eponymous debut album, which topped the U.S. Billboard 200 for 11 consecutive weeks. In 1993, Carrie married Sony Music head Tommy Mottola, who signed her to Columbia. She achieved worldwide success with follow-up albums Music Box, 1993, Merry Christmas, 1994, and Daydream, 1995. These albums spawned some of Carrie's most successful singles, including Hero, Without You, All I Want for Christmas Is You, Fantasy, Always Be My Baby, as well as One Sweet Day, which topped the U.S. Billboard Hot 100 for 16 weeks and became Billboard's Song of the Decade, 1990s Decade. After separating from Matola, Carrie adopted a new image and incorporated more elements of hip-hop into her music with the release of Butterfly, 1997. Billboard named her the country's most successful artist of the 1990s, while the World Music Awards honored her as the world's best-selling music artist of the 1990s, and the best-selling female artist of the millennium. After 11 consecutive years charting a U.S. number one single, Carrie parted ways with Columbia in 2000 and signed a $100 million recording contract with Virgin Records. However, following her highly publicized physical and emotional breakdown, as well as the critical and commercial failure of her film Glitter, 2001, and its accompanying soundtrack, her contract was bought out for $50 million by Virgin and she signed with Island Records the following year. After a relatively unsuccessful period, she returned to the top of music charts with The Emancipation of Mimi, 2005, the world's second best-selling album of 2005. Its second single, We Belong Together, topped the Billboard Hot 100 for 14 weeks and became Billboard's Song of the Decade 2000s Decade. In 2009, she was cast in the critically acclaimed film Precious, which won her the Breakthrough Actress Performance Award at the Palm Springs International Film Festival. Throughout her career, Carrie has sold over 200 million records worldwide, making her one of the best-selling music artists of all time. With a total of 19 songs topping the Billboard Hot 100, Carrie holds the record for the most number one singles by a solo artist, a female songwriter, and a female producer. According to the Recording Industry Association of America RIAA, she is the second highest certified female artist in the United States, with 66.5 million certified album units. In 2012, she was ranked second on VH1's list of the 100 Greatest Women in Music. In 2019, Billboard named her the all-time top female artist in the United States, based on both album and song chart performances. Aside from her commercial accomplishments, Carrie has won five Grammy Awards, 19 World Music Awards, 10 American Music Awards, and 15 Billboard Music Awards. An inductee of the Songwriters Hall of Fame, she is noted for inspiring other artists in pop and contemporary R&B music.
for the program. Thank you. And uh, you've got this Christmas album coming out, mm -hmm. which is um, fantastic because it's been such a long time since you had an album out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got to congratulate you first off. We, we keep doing it um, with the satellite from Australia about the success of Music Box. And not, not only in Australia, but worldwide. But did you ever dream it was going to be that big? I mean, really? I mean, it's big. It's mega now. <laughs> Um, I really didn't know and I, I tried not to think about it, but you know, of course, you always hope that what you're doing, you know, people are going to like what you're doing and it's going to be successful and everything, but it has really um, surpassed what I thought it would do, definitely. I mean, we were talking one stage about sort of like, you know, um, so I think it was the first interview about Tapestry and the Carol King album. Mm -hmm. Music Box has literally become like that. It's become, I mean, every track is just a potential single. Um, Thank you. The enormity of that album, what, what pressure does it put on you? Um, I mean, it's always tough to think, well, how am I going to follow this or how am I going to top that? But I try not to think, you know, in terms of success. I try yeah. to think of in terms of, you know, making music that I have fun making and that I enjoy making. So, um, you know, of course, you always hope that it'll be successful, but I can only do my best work and hope that people will like it. So we'll see what happens. Now, we've got the Christmas album coming out, which obviously must have been a lot of fun for you to do. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun, definitely. Um, the, the songs chosen, plus the original songs, but the traditional songs, uh, are they songs that you, you your favorite Christmas songs? Um, it, yeah, I chose a lot of like my favorite Christmas songs growing up, like Silent Night and, you know, all the songs that everybody sings, you know, Christmas caroling when you're growing up and stuff. But um, I wrote three new songs that I had a really great time doing because when you're writing um, Christmas songs, it's like a totally different perspective than just working on, you know, regular songs. It's, you know, some of them, I did one that's more of like a religious song, you know, more of almost like a hymn. And then I did one that was more of like a Christmas kind of love song. Mm -hmm. And one, the single um, called All I Want For Christmas Is You is really kind of like fun. You know, it's like kind of, you know, a play on it. It's, it's very like traditional kind of old fashioned Christmas. Yeah. It's very retro. It's kind of like 60s cute. I've seen the video on that. And uh, it's just kept thinking, I'm wondering who Santa Claus is in that. <laughs> That's a secret. I'm not allowed to tell yeah. that one. <laughs> but the dog with the, the dog, um, yeah. with the antlers is Princess, right. and Jack, the little one. Yeah. Um, with this album, I mean, it's um, it's one that obviously can stick around for a fair while now. I mean, every Christmas you're going to have this daunting sort of begin to come out. <laughs> your album. Um, does it worry you? I mean, like the fact that this one will be there for a long time. I tried to do it um, in a really classic way so that I didn't, I, I didn't jump on really any trends like of the moment. Um, I basically just did a, a Christmas album that I, you know, would want to listen to year after year, you know, because I'm always looking for a really good Christmas album at Christmas time and it's usually like one song from this album, one song from that. So it's, it's rare to find one that you really like listening to the whole thing. So, um, you know, I tried to do that on this album you know, do something that would stand the test of time, but, you know. I mean, it even brings out at Christmas time um, the most um, shy per people that would never normally sing, but they all right. sort of get around and they sort of get the courage to actually sing uh -huh. Christmas carol. <laughs> um, did you ever, when you were um, a kid, sort of actually go join kids and go around singing Christmas carols? Yeah, I, I always yeah. used to go Christmas caroling with my mom and my friends and you know, until I got to be like 12 and then I thought it wasn't cool anymore, but <laughs> yeah, so that, it's like a lot of fun. That's really why I made this album, just because I love Christmas time, it's my favorite time of year, and I'm like the most festive person under the sun. I mean, the day after Thanksgiving, and you guys don't have that in Australia, but here it's a really big holiday, so the day after Thanksgiving, it's like I'm out shopping for the tree, putting up decorations, and Christmas shopping and everything so it was just sort of like for me to have fun and and hopefully you know for my fans that are that are into the same thing to you know have something they can enjoy and it's not just for people necessarily that only celebrate Christmas it's like for the you know anybody that's into holiday. Now the fact that 
and as I'm doing now, the, the, the album is, is about to come out, and you'll mm -hmm. have to do, well, we're required to do promotion, etc., etc. Right. With your workload already, mm -hmm. will you be able to have that free time at Christmas? How do you intend to spend Christmas this year? Um, I think it's it's just going to be fun because doing stuff with. Um, and that's holiday related, you know, doing the holidays, doing, you know, the fact that I have the video that's coming out. That's re we really shot it last year at Christmas Which time. Is fun. Is yeah. Fun. Yeah, I had a, yeah, I had a really good time doing it. So, I mean, it's all going to be holiday related type stuff. Oh, there's my dog. She's crying over there. Yeah, you want to bring? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what's her name? Her name is Ginger. Oh, I need the hat too. And I have her with her whole little her red ensemble today. It'll, it'll be Ginger's first Christmas too, right? No, I'm going to put the hat on her. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, this is Ginger's first Christmas. Look at the baby. Look how cute she is. Can you get a shot of that mug? <laughs> hey. So, she's not in the video, so I have to give her a little press here. Okay. <laughs> how does it look? Okay. So tell me, with, um, with, with, with your workload again, and, um, and the fact that, you know, with all the success you've had, do, will you be doing your own Christmas tree this year? I mean... Definitely. Yeah. That's one thing I never miss, you know. I never miss doing that. Even though, you know, you can have people help you or do those things, I have to do it myself because I love doing it. It just, it reminds me of, like, growing up. And my mom was always really, she always made Christmas a lot of fun and you know yeah. even if we didn't have a lot of money she would wrap up like a thousand little gifts of stupid stuff and she would write like from the dog or you know Clarence and socks the cats or something like that so you know I'm looking forward to it now, it's really strange because um, we have I mean we love Christmas at home except that we, we don't have snow mm -hmm. um, and so it's very <laughs> hot down in Australia mm -hmm. when uh, we celebrate Christmas and right. even though we have the turkey and the plum pudding it's sort of sometimes laborious to do right. the meal when it's about 100 degrees. Right. Um, have you ever spent a Christmas away that, where there hasn't been snow or was it been sort of like... I've, I've never done that. I would never do it because yeah. that's... How, I mean, we like to go away after Christmas, you know, and we usually go like, you know, to a warm climate, but I, it has to be like at least two days after Christmas mm. because I love, you know, to be... I like it to be really like with snow and everything else. And last year we had a lot of snow, so that was good. But then I like the snow to melt, like the day after New Year's, and I want it to be summery. I mean, this has come as a shock to me, as anything else. Um, we're actually in um, the Hit Factory studios here. Right. Um, and Music Box is still as much alive now, probably, as it was when it was first released, as far as sales are concerned, because it doesn't stop selling. And we've got now the Christmas album, and you hear already starting on the next album. Mm -hmm. And we just heard a little bit. We heard a little bit and I didn't want anybody to hear it yet. My mumbling before I do the lyrics. I mean, would it be fair to term you as a workaholic? Um, I think it's more of like a write-aholic. It's not that I like to work a lot. It's that I really have a lot of ideas. And, you know, is she chewing? What is she doing? Chewing the getting to know the hat. Okay. Oh. <laughs> anyway, so it's just that I have like a lot of ideas and I don't like to put them aside. I really like to record while the ideas are fresh and I'm um, working with a lot of really cool people and, um, you know, enjoying doing that. Right now I have Jermaine Dupree inside there. He's done. He did Criss Cross. He did, um, do you guys have Debrat down yeah. there, Functified? He did that. That's actually him rapping on some of it. So, it's fun. It's like, I like to, you know, use different people that do different types of music. Like, you know, he's really great with hip-hop, and Dave Hall, who I did Dream Lover with, was really big in the hip-hop world, and then do what I do on top of it. So I think it's like an interesting mix. Um, with, with your songwriting, um, these days, does it come as easy? I mean, like, as it did, say, a couple of years ago? Um, definitely. You know, the hard thing is, she's destroying this hat. The hard thing... <laughs> <laughs> the hard thing is, is that like, uh oh, she's gonna fall out of this chair. Maybe I better put it down. Is that I um, have all these melodic ideas, and <laughs> you can't see her. <laughs> Too bad we don't have the handheld in here. 
Anyway, the hard thing with, with writing now is that I have all these um, melodic ideas and ideas, production ideas and everything, and I, I just, I can do them one after the other. I really have that, like, right there, but then I don't have the time to go do the lyrics. That's the only thing now is at the time. Mm -hmm. It's like right now I have about eight or nine songs written in terms of, you know, structurally and melodically and how production-wise, but I have to go do the lyrics. Yeah. So it's kind of like making time for that. That's my only problem. When I interviewed you here um, in New York, then in London, and I'd always bring up about touring mm -hmm. um, and going, you know, bring it live on stage. And you mm -hmm. get this sort of look on your face. Right. And you think, oh, I don't have to talk about that, you know. Uh -huh. Yet I saw you in Chicago and I loved the concert. And Thank you. Crowd. And you looked as if you really were having a great time. I was, I yeah. did. Uh huh. It's just, this dog is going wild. It's just that every day, you know, doing that, getting up and singing all those songs every day is so strenuous on my voice. It's like really, really difficult. And then with the traveling, I mean, and then I did it at last year, it was like Christmas time and, you know, almost Christmas time. And um, I had a cold half the time when I did the show in LA, I didn't think I was gonna be able to go on because with me, it's like the whole entire show is based upon my voice, basically. You know what I mean? I mean, I try to make it exciting, try to have good lighting, I had, you know, a few, you know, dance, you know, dancers there, and, you know, the great choir and the singers and all that adds to the excitement of the sure. show. But really, people are coming there to hear me sing. So, and, and you know, Stupid Me made all my songs so hard to sing. Yeah. <laughs> so every song is like, you know, a showstopper. So it's kind of like really hard to go out and do that. I couldn't do it night after night. Yeah. That's why I'm gonna do it again next year. I'm probably gonna do um, an international tour yeah. when I put my next album out. But it's gonna be tough, the touring thing. I have to do it. Like, I know, I know. She, she is going crazy. Can you see her? You have to show them this. Ginger, come here. Come here, Ginger. <laughs> Maybe you should just take some B-roll of this later. Cause she'll continue to do, okay. She's abandoned the hat now, okay. Um. Anyway, so it's tough to, to get out there and, and um, do it every night. So I'm trying to work on spacing it out so I can save my voice. But, but the irony of it is with the videos, I mean, the ones that we see live. Right. Um, I mean, they're, they're just, I mean, they've got really something about them. I mean, Thank sometimes you. live videos can not particularly work. But right. They do, though, you know? Um, that was a, the first, actually, the, the videos came from the, the first show that I ever really did, the first concert, the NBC special. Mm -hmm. It was um, up in upstate New York, and it was like I had the first 15 rows were my fan club, so it was like really great audience, you know, really, really, really cool. And then I went out and did my tour, and I learned a lot doing that, so, mm -hmm. you know, it was fun. I mean, the other one's awesome thing is that, that you're still so young, and yet you've in this short period of time, mm -hmm. achieved, or crammed in so much, and achieved so much, you know? Mm -hmm. Do you ever sort of sit back and go, oh my God, you know? I, mean, I know, I mean, it's, it's so, it's crazy because you don't realize that it was only 1990 when I put out my first album, it was only four years ago, and I've really basically had like four albums. I mean, you know, three studio albums, and then with the MTV Unplugged thing, that's um, kind of for, and then I have this Christmas album. So I've done so much, you know, I've really put out a lot of material, and that's also, you know, another thing contributing to everything. But it's it's incredible. I haven't stopped working, you know. I really haven't stopped since I started, so it's hard to sit back and reflect. But I, I try to think about it every day and be thankful for everything that I have. The other thing, when I, I, was, when I was down in Miami uh, a few uh, days ago, and, uh, and I was... Um, doing an interview with Gloria Estefan. Mm -hmm. uh, we were talking about the fact that, and she's in a similar situation, uh, where both you and her, um, your profiles are right up there, yet there's no scandal, there's no nothing, there's no gimmick. It's singers, you know? The, the, the papers can't find anything. And, I mean, there's just, I mean, it's not, I'm not saying that you know, you're sweet and pure and all of that sort of thing, but that must be very satisfying to you, that they, you're the singer and that's what they treat you on. 
Um, it is. I mean, I try to be as private as I can, you know, and that's all you can do. I mean, people will make things up, they'll say things, you know, and I, I've had some stupid situations, you know, in the press I wouldn't even bring up. But, you know, pretty much I've been very fortunate and I think that's all you can do is just, you know, try to live your life. There was endless love um, with Luther. Was it fun to do? It was really fun to do, and we actually just did it live at Royal Albert Hall when we were in London. Oh, yeah. oh so we um, we put that live version out now. It just came out actually on radio. I don't know if you guys have it yet, but yeah, that was really exciting working with him. He's one of the best singers in the world, I think. Well, I mean, you, you did a bit with Trent, and you gave him a great sort of boost. Do you, do you enjoy doing duet? Um, I do, you know, it's it's like good to break it up a little bit and um, kind of like feed off of somebody else, you know. Well, now back to the Christmas album, um, out of all the traditional songs, and you've done many on this, what is your favourite song? You could song the night before is a, a good Christmas song. Um, What's the song you used to belt out when you were a kid? More than anything mm. else. Well, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, but I didn't do it on the album. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's really hard to pick my favorite Christmas song. There are so many great ones. That's why it was even kind of tough to choose which ones I would do on the album. But um, I like all of them. <laughs> with, um, with the whole thing with Music Box, I mean, I'm just getting back to that, because not really since Michael Jackson, since the days of the thriller, we've seen such an exciting thing happen with an album. Um, and as I said, it just keeps going and going. And to have you know, an enormous sales outside America um, is pretty astonishing. Uh, and from country to country, I, I kept thinking maybe you were following me around, because wherever, <laughs> be it Asia and, and Europe and, and, uh, and South America, there'd be simply every fourth track was, was a Mariah Carey track. Uh, once you go internationally with the tour, we'll, we basically see a collection from all, a good selection from all of the material you've done? Definitely. I would want to do all my favorite songs, you know, from each album. Or, you know, you have to do the songs that everybody wants to hear, but I try to throw in some of the ones that were never singles, you know, that were my favorites, like Vanishing from the first album was probably one of my favorites that I've done. And um, I mean, that's what I did in the last tour. I threw in some of those and did some oldies that I really liked from other people's songs. But um, yeah, I'll do a, probably stuff from all the albums and um, some new remakes. You know, you never know. So when, when, with this album that you're working on now, mm -hmm. when do you envisage that might be coming out onto the market? The new album that I'm working on? I, I have no idea. I don't want to rush it, you know, I mean, I've had a lot of stuff out there and I just want to take my time and do it the right way and make the best album that I can make, you know, so. Do you ever sort of like record songs from any of the albums that, that have been left over that maybe, you know, they, didn't, they weren't included on that album or they, and then they weren't included on next? Is there tracks that we have never heard that have thawed away, like, I'm not saying like a Prince, but. Right. Um, I, pr I pretty much try to use the best stuff that I have, you know, when I have it, like, that's the way I work. I won't even finish writing something if I don't really like it that much. But sometimes I'll forget about things that I have. And um, especially, like, with Walter Afanasiev, who I wrote, you know, a lot of the stuff on this album with, like, Hero and Anytime You Need a Friend. Um, and he and I will just, I mean, we can sit in a room and come up with a lot of melody ideas and a lot of song ideas, and then we forget them. Like, the other day we were both sitting there trying to remember this idea that we both had loved at the time. We couldn't remember it. And last night I remembered it, actually, when I was taking a bath. <laughs> and I called him from the tub to tell him, but he wasn't home. So I have to call him. Thanks, and uh, as I say, congratulations on Music Box. Thank um, you. And uh, I showed it to Tim Cameron, it's ever going to sell. And uh, it's great that you've done a Christmas album because everyone loves a Christmas album and it's not often we get them, you know, from major stars, especially in this case with, with the, the sort of zooming with music box. And from everyone in Australia, and certainly from myself, I hope you have a great cold Christmas. Thank you. We're, like, we're going to hope we have a really hot yes, one. Yes, have a great hot.
What made you wait almost a day and a half yeah. for Mariah Carey to show up here? Okay, I just totally admire her because I know that she's a good person inside because I look into all of her, all of her in interviews and I read all of her articles and I just love her and I love singing. So I love her voice, like, perfectly. She is just perfect to me, and she's beautiful inside and out. Do you like that little hook that she does with her voice? Yeah, man, that's what she's known for. That's Mariah. Well, part of the title means that there's a lot of different um, high, different uh, colors and textures of my voice, different collaborations, different influences, and I try to incorporate them all and make them work within one, uh, you know, setting, basically. So, I mean, I, I think that uh, there's a lot of different moods as well. I just enjoy collaborations. For me, it'd be so boring to only stand there and sing ballads, you know what I mean? It's not, it's like, I like to have a variety. Spice of life. Yeah. I don't think it'll show up on the blue. Can you sign the cast? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What happened? I'll be careful in soccer, you can hurt. I just said that, that I love her and that it was because she said, I'm sorry that you had to wait that long. She was like, I felt so guilty. And I said, I was like, don't feel guilty, we had so much fun, and, and I love you, and I would wait 30 more hours for you. Total of uh, 36 hours that I waited for her, and I haven't slept yet. And I'm gonna go home and hit the bed, because <laughs> I am very tired. No voice, as you can see, and this is just amazing. Um, it's an amazing achievement, and it's, you're welcome. It's really because of my fans, like I have devoted amazing fans. That's why, hi, how you doing? That's why I do stuff, you're welcome. That's why I do stuff like this because you get to really talk to friends even more than in a live concert. So I have a brand new single mm -hmm. called Thank God I Found You, which um, comes out this week in the States um, and probably within a week or so all over the rest of the world. And I'm starting my tour on February 14th, Valentine's Day. And Thank God I Found You has two versions, actually, one that's only available on the single. And it's called Thank God I Found You slash Make It Last Forever. So it's kind of like a Valentine's Day special package there. So I think it's a, I think people would enjoy listening to it with their mate on Valentine's Day. So you are a true romantic girl. I was going to ask you about Valentine's Day and whether you were a real romantic girl, but you obviously are. I think I'm very romantic. Sometimes I've been accused of not being romantic, but come on, I write these love songs and all that. I mean, give me a little credit. I'm a romantic. <laughs> <laughs> so where did this song come from? What was the impetus behind Thank God I Found You? Well, Thank God I Found You was inspired by a very special person, and that's why I think it's a great sort of, uh, it ends my album, it's the last song on my album, Rainbow. And, um, it's the, this is the first album I've ever made that has a happy ending. Every other album ends in complete and total misery. <laughs> For some reason, I don't know, I never, I didn't consciously do it, but I always had a sad song at the end of the album. And um, at the end of this album, Rainbow, there's a happy ending, and it's Thank God I Found You, which is the new single. And um, I think that definitely starting the tour on Valentine's Day is kind of, symbolic of that whole thing and the whole hopefulness and happiness of the song in terms of love and gratitude and all that sort of thing. And, it's a, very, stuff. and it's a very direct message. I mean, thank God I found you. I mean, isn't it? Right. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty it's pretty basic. <laughs> 
So this this happiness vibe, this is this is you now. Are you kind of feeling very at one together? Well, actually last night I was completely miserable <laughs> for half the night. And then the rest of the night, the morning I woke up and I had a positive vibe and outlook. And it's like, you know, it's, nothing is perfect. Every day is its own thing. And um, this is a really bizarre industry and it can really mess with your mind and twist your thinking and make you paranoid and make you, um, you know, you're very vulnerable. But it is nice to be with somebody who understands how it is to be in the public eye and to have to deal with that mess because it is a complete and total mess. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you kind of freak out sometimes too? Because you know, that scrutiny that you're under the whole time is so intense. You know, the singing is one thing, but there's the whole load of other yeah. stuff that you couldn't probably even imagine when you started out. No, I when I first, well, I've known I wanted to be a singer since I knew that there was such a thing as growing up and having an occupation, which is basically since I was four. Um, my mother was an opera singer and a vocal coach, and you know, we she quit doing that at a certain point, and then. She kind of uh, struggled, and I didn't grow up having a lot of money or a lot of things, and I had a lot of ambition, and I started writing songs when I was 13, and I'm just a radio fanatic, and then I grew up, you know, from about that time watching videos on MTV and wanting to do that and, you know, knowing that that was my dream, and now that's what I do, and it's, the music half of it is great, the fans are great, that feeling of acceptance that you get on stage um, and the warm feeling you get when you meet your fans who are really and truly um, people who admire your work is something that's hard to even explain it's such a high but as you know dealing with the other aspects of the whole celebrity thing is very bizarre and it's also kind of new for me because I was really sheltered from it in the beginning because I did start out so young and I was surrounded by very powerful people and um, they kept a lot of things from me, and maybe some of that was good, but some of it was bad, because it didn't really prepare me for how intense it is to be in the public eye like this. But you know what? At the end of the day... Throughout her career, Carrie has collected numerous awards and honors, including the World Music Awards Best Selling Female Artist of the Millennium, the Grammy's Best New Artist in 1991, and Billboard's Special Achievement Award for the Artist of the Decade during the 1990s. In a career spanning over 20 years, Carrie has sold over 200 million records worldwide, making her one of the biggest selling artists in music history. Carrie is ranked as the best-selling female artist of the Nielsen SoundScan era, with over 52 million copies sold. Carrie was ranked first in MTV and Blender Magazine's 2003 Countdown of the 22 Greatest Voices in Music, and was placed second in Cove Magazine's list of the 100 Outstanding Pop Vocalists. Aside from her voice, she has become known for her songwriting. Yahoo Music editor Jason Ankeny wrote, she earned frequent comparison to rivals Whitney Houston and Celine Dion, but did them both one better by composing all of her own material. According to Billboard magazine, she was the most successful artist of the 1990s in the United States. At the 2000 World Music Awards, Carrie was given a Legend Award for being the best-selling female pop artist of the millennium, as well as the best-selling artist of the 90s in the United States, after releasing a series of albums of multi-platinum status in Asia and Europe, such as Music Box and Number Ones. She is also a recipient of the Chopper Diamond Award in 2003, recognizing sales of over 100 million albums worldwide. Additionally, the Recording Industry Association of America RIAA, lists Carrie as the third best-selling female artist, with shipments of over 63 million units in the U.S. In Japan, Carrie has the top four highest-selling albums of all time by a non-Asian artist. Carrie has spent 82 weeks at the number one position on Billboard Hot 100, the greatest number for any artist in U.S. chart history. On that same chart, she has accumulated 19 number one singles, the most for any solo artist, and second behind the Beatles. Carrie has also had three songs debut atop the Hot 100 chart. 
In 1994, Carey released her holiday album Merry Christmas has sold over 15 million copies worldwide, and is the best-selling Christmas album of all time. It also produced the successful single, All I Want for Christmas is You, which became the only holiday song and ringtone to reach multi-platinum status in the US. In Japan, Number Ones has sold over 3,250,000 copies and is the best-selling album of all time in Japan by a non-Asian artist. Her hit single, One Sweet Day, which featured Boys Two Men, spent 16 consecutive weeks at the top of Billboard's Hot 100 chart in 1996, setting the record for the most weeks atop the Hot 100 chart in history. After Carey's success in Asia with Merry Christmas, Billboard estimated Carey as the all-time best-selling international artist in Japan. In 2008, Billboard listed, We Belong Together, ninth on the Billboard Hot 100 All-Time Top Songs and second on Top Billboard Hot 100 R&B, Hip Hop Songs. The song was also declared the most popular song of the 2000s decade by Billboard. In 2009, Carey's cover of Foreigner's song, I Want to Know What Love Is, became the longest-running number one song in Brazilian singles chart history, spending 27 consecutive weeks at number one. Additionally, Carey has had three songs debut at number one on the Billboard Hot 100, Fantasy, One Sweet Day, and Honey, making her the artist with the most number one debuts in the chart's 52-year history. Also, she is the first female artist to debut at number one in the U.S. with Fantasy. In 2010, Carrie's 13th album and second Christmas album, Merry Christmas to You, debuted at number one on the R&B, Hip Hop Albums chart, making it only the second Christmas album to top that chart. On November 19, 2010, Billboard magazine named Carrie in their Top 50 R&B, Hip Hop Artists of the Past 25 Years, chart at number four. In 2012, Carey was ranked second on VH1's list of the 100 Greatest Women in Music. Billboard magazine ranks her at number 5 on the Billboard Hot 100 All-Time Top Artists, making Carey the second most successful female artist in the history of the Billboard Hot 100 chart. In August 2015, Carey was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In 2017, PETA gave her their Angel for Animals Award, in honor of her work on the animated film, All I Want for Christmas is You, in which a young girl adopts a homeless dog.
do. I travel around the world, meet a lot of different people. I love to meet different people, different cultures. Um, it's very exciting to me as a songwriter because I write my songs, produce my songs. Not many people know that because as a female, sometimes people forget. They just see glamorous, da 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 da, but they don't think you're the one writing, you're doing these things. But that's that's what I'm most proud of. So I don't know if anybody in this audience has had twins, but it's a very, very big deal. And I cannot express physically how, like, the toll that it takes on you. So I'm still, like, you know, I work out a lot. I try to do as much as I can. I'm still getting there, you know what I mean? I'm still, re I'm still becoming me who I was before the whole thing. We um, have this room at the top of the house and also the roof. They're both designed in Moroccan style. And um, so we spend a lot of time up there, Nick and myself. And anyway, the baby ended up, one of the babies ended up being called Moroccan. <laughs> And it's, it's different when you grow up as a biracial person. It's really different, and particularly in America, where we think we're over this racism situation, but we're not. We're really not. And I don't know if the world is or whatever, but I think it's just like it's something that because it's visual and because I people look at me, they don't know what to think I am. They're just confused sometimes. Like they've been confused for years. I don't know, <laughs> but you know, it's it's a good thing to at least know who you are inside and that's the most important thing. And that's what I want to teach to my kids. <laughs>